Hello and welcome to the Capitola Planning Commission meeting of October 6th. In accordance with California Senate Bill 361, this is a hybrid meeting with commissioners and the public attending both in person and remotely via, via Zoom. Information on how to join the meeting using a Zoom application or landline or mobile phone, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and on the published meeting agenda. As always, this meeting is cable cast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 in the City of Capitola and on Channel 25 throughout Santa Cruz County. This, being, this meeting is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. Meetings can also be streamed live on YouTube or on the city's website. Our technician tonight is Eric Johansson. And with that, we can uh, start with the roll call. Here. Commissioner Newman. Here. Commissioner Westman. Here. Commissioner Ruth. Here. Chair Wilk. Here. Okay. Uh, oral communications. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Yes. Um, thank you, Chair Wilk. This evening, uh, we're requesting that the public hearing for item 3C, that that item for 401 Capitola Avenue conditional use permit and parking variance for a bar and lounge pour room be continued to the November meeting. Um, you will have to open a public hearing and close it for that item since it is on the regular agenda. We also received additional materials. Um, we received comments from the, the business owner as well as two public comments that were sent to the Planning Commission as well. So additional comments. Those will be included in the next packet in November as well. Okay, very good. Um, if there are no more additions or deletions to the agenda, we'll move on to public comments. This is a time for anyone at the, in the public at large to speak on issues that are not on the agenda. You have up to three minutes and, uh, and can either speak uh, here on the microphone or uh, on Zoom. Uh, do we have any, uh, anyone who wishes to speak on items that are not on the agenda? I see that we have four participants via Zoom and no hands are raised. Very good. We'll move on then to commission comments. Are there any comments by the commissioners? Seeing none, we'll move on to staff comments. Item D. Staff comments? Um, no comments this evening. Just actually one reminder that when, um, due to our hybrid meeting, We've been getting some comments about uh, public not being able to hear at times. So just a reminder to always speak into the microphone and that reminder goes for the public as well when you come up to the podium to please speak into the microphone. Thank you. Very good. Item E, consent calendar. There are two item, one item, just one item on the consent calendar. Um, 216 Central Avenue. Does anybody wish to pull that from the consent calendar, either the commissioners or members of the public? Uh, I just have one comment I would like to ask staff. Uh, when this item comes back to us, uh, can you give us information that makes it clear why this is a historic building? Uh, I know it was at one time, but it's been moved from uh, where it was currently located. And so uh, I would like the uh, historian or someone to, you know, validate why we're still considering it a historic structure. Thank you. And with that, I'll make a motion to continue this Can item. Turn my phone off? Airplane mode. <laughs> 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 you have, uh, so I hear a motion uh, to approve the consent calendar. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion by Commissioner Westman <coughs> and a second by Commissioner Christensen. Right, and the approval is just continuing it to our next meeting. Correct. Yeah. That's a request to continue. Um, so could I have a roll call vote on the consent calendar? Yes, please. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Newman? Aye. Commissioner Westman? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Chair Wilk? Aye. Okay, item three, public hearings. This is uh, a portion of the meeting that's intended to follow a series of uh, protocols starting with the staff presentation, planning commission questions, public comment, and then deliberation and decision. Our first item on the public hearing agenda is item A, 3720 Capitola Road, 
and 1610 Bulb Avenue. Do we have a staff presentation? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm uh, going to recuse myself due to proximity of, of a, a property interest I have. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Newman. So there'll be four of us. <coughs> okay, uh, good evening, Chair Wilk and Planning Commissioners. Uh, this evening before you, I have a conceptual review for 3720 Capitola Road and 1610 Bulb Avenue. Um, this application is for a conceptual review of a future annexation and whether or not this uh, application meets the findings for a community benefit application. Um, the community benefit being proposed is a senior living facility. And to be clear, the property at 1610 Bulb Avenue is located in the county of Santa Cruz and as part of this project, the applicant would like to go through an annexation to bring it into the city of Capitola. Within our chapter 17.88, um, incentives for community benefits, they have been established to incentivize applicants to locate and design development projects in a manner that provides a substantial benefit to the community. These incentives are intended to facilitate the redevelopment and underutilized properties consistent with the vision of 41st Avenue corridor as described in the general plan. The city may grant incentives only when the community benefits or amenities are offered that are not required. A community benefit must significantly advance the general plan or incorporate a project feature that substantially exceeds the, the city's minimum requirements. Um, within our community benefits allowance, if, if a project, it has to be located in a certain area of Capitola to um, even qualify. And if an applicant brings in a community benefit, the result is that they can get increased floor area in this part of town from 2.0 to 2.5 and um, increased height from 35 feet to 50. The first step in this process is to go through a conceptual review to make sure that the Planning Commission and the City Council can make findings for a community benefit. Um, 1610 Bulb Avenue is located within the County of Santa Cruz and is zoned as a residential property. Um, the parking for the elderly care facility is not an allowed use within the residential zoning district. Therefore, the applicant must bring that property into the project and be part of the city of Capitola. Um, if the proposed project is supported by the Planning Commission, the applicant can then begin the application process to be annexed into the city. A letter of support from the city is required for the annexation process to begin. The city council will be reviewing this application at their hearing next week. Um, in order to qualify for an annexation, a property must be within the city's sphere of influence. This is the map from the general plan and the property is within the sphere of influence. And basically within the sphere of influence, we have looked, um, we can, we ensure that urban services can be provided to that area should those, the areas within the sphere of influence, um, if it's within the sphere of influence. So this property is. Um, next, I'm going to, this is kind of a joint effort on the presentation. We have the architect, Greg Irwin. He is representing the, um, the applicant and I'm going to hand over the presentation. He's got two slides in which he's going to go over their proposal and then from there I'll, I'll continue with my presentation. So at this time, Greg, if you could unmute.
There we go. Okay, Greg, you are now unmuted. You're welcome to um, give the details of the next two slides. Although you, um, we cannot hear you. be a good idea to have applicants be present now that we're back in person. It would help. <laughs> um, Lee Corey, is, are you able to speak on behalf of Greg Irwin or Raphael? <laughs> but you'll have to unmute. Greg, can you hear us? Greg, can you hear us? You're now unmuted. Um, or Lee Corey, can you hear us? In the chat, they're saying there's no sound on their end. We miss Larry Laurent. We do. <laughs> Maybe we should go Those on to the next here. item while they're trying to figure this out. Yeah, yeah we could continue <coughs> this yeah. for a few minutes and do the other items on the agenda. Yeah, um, that sounds like a good idea. So um, at this point, we're going to continue and move on to the other items on the agenda. I am going to ask. Greg Irwin to please send me um, an email with a phone number in which we can reach out to him directly okay. in order to get comments. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we'll postpone that till the end of the agenda and move on then to item B, 529 Capitola Avenue. And I have to recuse myself from this item because of proximity to where I live. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are we, we ready to go? Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this next item before you is 529 Capitola Avenue. Uh, proposal is for an ADU over a garage, uh, which a two-story ADU does require a design permit. Uh, property is in the coastal zone, but not in the appeal area, so it's not appealable. And I uh, just wanted to point out that it is in the mixed-use neighborhood zone, uh, even though it is uh, being used as a single-family residence. Uh, just some existing photos, street views. Um, this is an existing 1,380 square foot, one and a half story. Um, in 2019, a pretty extensive renovation and remodel was done to the property, uh, adding those dormers. And then on the photo on the right, I'll point out the uh, the shed, which was uh, an issue that I'll go into a little bit uh, during our plan review. We had to uh, look at its status as a historic building. Um, brief overview of the project is to demo the mentioned uh, garage or shed, uh, construct the two-story two building, ADU over garage. Uh, the property, as I mentioned, was, is listed on the historic structures list, so I have a slide I'll, I'll get into that. And then two other topics to talk about. Uh, there's a bit of an atypical parking design, and uh, the applicant is requesting a deviation from standards for uh, some upper floor windows. 
So just getting into the historic status, um, with the 2019 edition, uh, the city contracted with a consultant. They identified that the garage was existing as of 1927, so it is older than uh, 50 years, which means we are to look into it if it's an identified uh, property. Um, and they also did not uh, fully or thoroughly investigate the garage at that time. So we were able to get uh, the same consultant prepared an addendum, uh, and they found that the garage does not meet any criteria uh, as a resource. So that issue was closed. Um, getting into the proposed site plan, um, existing residence in purple and the ADU over the garage is in orange. And then the parking space I mentioned is in yellow. Uh, a couple things about the parking space and the garage in particular. I, I mentioned this is in the mixed use neighborhood. So uh, curb cut limitations that are typical with R1 are not applicable here uh, as well. Uh, in order for this property to provide parking in a driveway, uh, it is only 40 feet wide. A new curb cut on Capitola Avenue really isn't ideal uh, in any way given how close it is to the intersection. Uh, property being 40 feet wide and accommodating tandem parking spaces <coughs> doesn't allow um, two 10 by 20 spaces to fit. Uh, so the property does need some uh, creative parking solution and uh, which is why we, we ended up with this. So this is a parallel to Beverly Avenue parking space with a flared access which uh, lends to its ability to be readily used on a daily basis. Um, this is just floor plans. Uh, ground floor is 21 by 24, uh, accommodates an interior stair, two parking spaces, and then as the stair approaches the landing, there's room underneath for a washer dryer. And then the second floor is just a, um, a one bedroom ADU, I've got the arrows here that are pointing toward the south, which is the windows that the applicant is requesting the deviation for. Elevations, uh, it's 22 feet height, uh, matches the board and batten siding, uh, same standing seam roof material that's used on the primary, uh, and then the roof slope matches the dormers on the primary. And then I've got the, uh, the arrows here again, this is kitchen window and the living room of the ADU. So uh, specifically, I've got the code section here that does call for opaque or clear story windows on the second story. Uh, we're facing adjacent property. Um, after the development and design meeting, staff did go to the property and, and took a real world visit to see what the impact was. Uh, there are some mitigating conditions just in uh, with landscaping and the fact that the nearest adjacent building is 20 feet away. So we came up with a condition that uh, does pay respect to the code, but it does allow the applicant an ability for some clear windows. And so we're recommending anything below 60 inches uh, be treated with an opaque coating in a window, or they could have the option at building permit to uh, increase sill height. These are the photos that we took at the site visit. So going left to right, um, you can see the, the building is removed from the property line. It's approximately 20 feet away. And then in the middle photo, you can see there's a, a mature hedge and vine that uh, do provide some privacy and screening, although this isn't an, an exact vantage point. And then the photo on the far right uh, is just an acknowledgement that the applicant is doing opaque windows to face the, the building to the west. Uh, which is that would have the greatest privacy impact. So with that, uh, we are recommending approval with the, with the condition and findings as reported in the report. I'm available for any questions. Are there any questions? I just have a question, Brian, on consistency <laughs> of policy. Uh, oh. In the last several years, there have been four new homes built on Emerald Street. Three of them required clear story windows on the back facing the adjacent lots. And then last year we approved one on Emerald Street that has a four by four window overlooking three different lots, their backyards. And now in this case, we're requiring opaque or the windows to be at 60 inches. 
So I'm just concerned that we're inconsistent in applying this policy. So the, poli the objective standard is tied to the ADUs. So it's one of it's it's clearly defined in our code as a standard for ADUs. I believe the home on Emerald that you're speaking of is a single family home, not the ADU, which we don't have a, we don't have standards for single family on the second floor. So you are correct. We have not we have not applied that consistently. Privacy from an ADU is the same as privacy from a single family home. So I, I just don't get it. But wasn't that like before that? the objective standards came into effect? It, no. Yeah, it was, it was um, something new that came out of the, the update to um, the ADU standards, which happened between the code update and we had our code update and then we had our ADU and then the final code update. We are doing a cleanup to our code currently that we're um, hoping to okay, bring to you. Um, before the end of the year, it, it might be January though, and when we do that, we could look we, we could look at that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? If not, it's now the time to move to public comment. Does anybody member any member of the public wish to comment on this particular agenda item? Honorable members of the Planning Commission, um, I remember Doug Messini, who you all excuse me, could you uh, quite well. excuse me, Dennis, could you uh, announce who you are and then write oh, uh, write I, your name on the? Uh, okay, I am Dennis Norton. I'm the representative for the family, uh, the Tory families here, as long with, along with their neighbors, and uh, including the ones adjacent to uh, that property. Um, I remember Doug Messini saying, uh, "Someday I'm going to take a chicken coop to the planning process to see what happens." <laughs> we just did it. That's basically what it, what that building is. Is that it was a cow barn or a chicken coop or maybe maybe I don't sure they had tractors in, but maybe they could park a tractor in there. But if you've seen the condition of that, um, you um, we we agree with the conclusion of staff and um, and the historian Leslie Dill that this this structure is not savable. Although we will save the wood on it, the wood will be recycled in that in that project there. Um, well, we agree with all the condition approval with the exception of number 12 on here. And what number 12 is asking for is to underground the, the utilities to this. The, the house is serviced um, from across the street overhead and has been through history. And a, a recent remodel, there was no condition to put that underground. Un, that in underground. What we're going to do is we're taking it from the existing meter on the on the main house, and we're going underground to this to the ADU, um, and so that is the most economical way to do this, and uh, it's quite impactful cost-wise for for this applicant to to actually put underground from across the street to their to the existing house there, and I I don't know I've seen another uh, ADU that's been required to to underground the main house. This is a new condition that I've ever seen. So I'd like you to look at that if you could please. And um, the, uh, the members of the family are here and the neighbors to speak with you also. And I think this is a good project. And um, the, the barn will be, the barn and chicken will, <coughs> will be recycled. And thank you, Doug. <laughs> I have a question for you. Thank you, yes. um, go ahead. Do you have an estimate from pg e for the undergrounding? No, we haven't. Do yeah. you have a ballpark? Uh, it's going to be probably from across the street. It's probably going to be with with um, tearing the street up. They're probably in thirty thirty five thousand. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question also, sure. Dennis. So will uh, ADU and the home still be just on one meter? Is that it, how it will work? Yeah, it'll stay on one meter, and he's going to during the process upgrade that meter to a two hundred amp, so that'll give it enough power. And we that's kind of what we've been doing with other places. There, do a two hundred amp on the main, and then do a hundred amp on the on the accessory dwelling. Thank you. Well, I've got a question. I maybe want to direct it towards staff since we're focusing on this utilities thing. Uh, w why was uh, item 12 added? Yeah, I, I actually think in conclusion we're on the same page uh, with the the applicant uh, or with what Dennis is saying. We even we added language saying and or meter. So the expectation is that any new utility lines would be underground. 
So from the meter to the new the ADU is okay. So just to clarification, I think we're we're close here. We're saying the same thing. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dennis. Are there any other uh, uh, public comments? Members of the public wish to speak on this, either on anybody on Zoom. <coughs> there are six attendees on Zoom, um, none with their hands up. Okay, we'll move this then to planning commission deliberation. Any members of the commission wish to speak on this item? Well, I, I think it's a good project. I have no real issues with it. Uh, undergrounding is a good thing. Uh, a good policy and a good uh, direction to go as much as we can, but it may be a little excessive. Uh, hey, lady, hey, lady, hey, lady. Oh, oh, oh. We're getting closer. <laughs> it, it may be a little excessive in the context of this project to, uh, to spend that amount of money. Other comments? I would move approval. I have one question. Um, Courtney? Sorry. <laughs> um, so just to be clear for number 12 you're going to revise that or are you going to admit it omit it completely yeah our, our intention was that the and i did talk to the applicant about this so they're going to pull from the existing meter on the house so okay. that the condition is intended that that conduit um, be placed in a trench to the adu but that the existing drop from capitola ab can remain okay okay I would okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll second the motion. <laughs> so we have a motion from Commissioner Ruth and a second uh, by Commissioner Newman. Uh, are there any other discussions on this item? I, I have one comment, I guess, and that is uh, Mr. Norton mentioned the chicken coop, and it, it just did seem to me that the, the idea of having to go to a historian to get this approved <coughs> seemed unnecessary that somehow and I realize I talked to Brian about this and I understand the logic behind it but it, it sim just seems to me that we use consultants more than we could and something like this could probably you know maybe a quick phone call to historian or something said hey you know we're, we're just gonna tear this down right anyway that's just a comment and doesn't affect my uh, opinion so uh, with that we have a motion and a second can we have a roll call vote please Louis sure Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Commissioner Westman is recused. Chair Wilk. Aye. Passes unanimously. Uh, unanimously. Um, thank you. <laughs> Good luck with your project. Um, are we ready to move back to Capitol Road and Bulb Avenue? Or do we want to continue to postpone so, that? Um, thank you guys. I, want, I want to check with the applicant whether or not they can hear us uh, on Zoom. Because if, if the applicant can't hear us on Zoom, then the public can't hear us on Zoom. And therefore, I think that if that's a scenario, we should probably continue. Um, Greg, if you could unmute, or Raphael, or Lee, we're wondering if you can hear us. I'm going to give a call to the applicant. I just got their cell phone number. Where are they? Does anybody know? Southern California, I think. They're based in Costa Mesa, so. Oh, oh, oh we got the pictures. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. So is your volume? So is your volume up on your? Oh yeah. oh yeah. I've been using it all day, so it's worked fine all day long. Okay. Um, no, no one on the our team can hear anybody. <coughs> okay. This is what happened to me last week. So. Okay. I, I'm thinking okay. we should I'm continue, continue, your continue your item. Your item. Only because if you can't hear us, and also if the public at home cannot hear us, uh, it wouldn't be a. Well, I mean, we've had a chance to uh, review this. Perhaps they would appreciate our comments. Yeah, I can hear you too, Lee. We just can't hear the council chambers for some reason. No, I heard her. But it's not going to work. 
to the public. Oh, I don't hear That's you. True. <laughs> okay. I'll mute. Okay, no, um, actually, it's helpful. Lee, can you hear us? No. Lee, can you hear us? <laughs> I can hear you through your phone. Okay. Um, uh, Lee, are you muted or unmuted? Uh, I'm in the same. Okay. I I'm unmuted at this point. Yeah. Is Lee in the same Is conference Lee in the same conference room? room? No, he's in uh, Oregon and I'm in California. And I'm getting it all now. Lee, can you hear can our hear chair? Our when he's Hello? Chair? Can you hear me? This is Chair Will. I can Will. hear you. I, I haven't heard any of this, and I wasn't getting no. any off the YouTube live stream either. Yeah, we're not getting it on the live stream, or you look at the YouTube live stream, and there's no sound. You can't hear this? So... Raphael, can you Raphael, hear us? Can you hear us? I, I hear you, uh, Katie. I think I'm hearing you through Greg's phone. I, I think the issue is the city council's audio is input is not working. Yeah, the, the city's input isn't working is what he's saying. So if you can hear you through my phone in my office. I, I can hear you clearly. Maybe we can take a five-minute break. Uh, do we yeah, want to take another yeah, sure. Sure. Do we want to continue go with this and move on to item? Yeah, let's go we're gonna go to the next we're item go and we'll come back. Actually can we go through the agenda? Okay. okay. You know guys, one thing we could just do is um, mute, oh, turn our mics right off and dial in by phone. Yeah, yeah, disconnect but uh, reconnect we're give them five minutes to yeah, yeah. Yeah. but do director's report and Oh I see what you're saying. Uh yeah, what can we you, so you hmm, so you'd rather so, do director's report and comments and then then go back then to I'm recused, recused and then just, uh, yeah. uh, well let's do that then let's move on ahead to uh, item four can we go ahead and do the director's report well i mean we got four, uh, 401 capitola it could be continued well actually i can i don't have to be here for that either you're right right So you want to be here for the director's report? Yeah, though. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't miss it. Um, there is no director's report this evening. <laughs> so. well, so, uh, does anybody have any last-minute commission com communications you want to that so Ed wants to put, hear? Now that we're back here, are we going to put the Pledge of Allegiance back on our yes, agenda? Yes, that was I noted that at the very beginning of the meeting. So if that's okay with sure. I don't know. Did we? Uh, did we want to vote on that? Do we want to? Is that something that? Well, I think I mean, it's I, city required policy to have it for us to do it. We uh, were skipping it when we were Zooming because we had such difficulty with none of us being able to see right, it at right, the right, same right. time. <laughs> but I think that uh, technically we're required to have it on our agenda. I know I, you know, I asked Jamie that, to, Jamie Goldstein that, and he said it wasn't required. Let's just do it. Let's so, just do it. I don't know. Do you just want to just do it? <laughs> so we can just do it. Yeah, it always makes me chuckle through it. So yeah. <laughs> Don't say why. I won't. <laughs> I can't look at him when I do it. Yeah, Lyndon Johnson's fault. <laughs> All right, well, did you want to be recused while we talk this briefly and just to give him another few minutes to try to hook this up and then? So the last two things left are the two things I'm recused from, 401 continuance yeah. mm -hmm. and 529. So I will. And the adjournment. Well, we, you might want to stick around. We for already the did 529. <laughs> for, what? for the what? For the adjournment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. So let, Can so we do the adjournment first? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll see you on uh, the November meeting. Thank All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. So you're, you're, you don't want to be part of this? 3720 Bulb Capitol Road in Bulbath. On this one, you recused. Oh, okay. Recused on the next. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just thought you were. Hi, Ed. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Okay, so why don't we go ahead with item C then, which is 401 Capitola, which I must recuse myself from. Okay. Uh, 401 Capitola. Continue. Capitola Avenue, uh, the staff is requesting that this item be continued to our November 3rd meeting. Um, 
And I would actually like to thank the staff for making that request because it seems like we've gotten an awful lot of new information in the last day or so, and I think this is an important issue. So um, can I hear a motion to continue it to the November meeting? We have a motion. I'll motion. <laughs> Continue. Second. All right. We have a motion and second. Um, can we have a roll call vote? Why don't you call okay. the roll? All right. We'll have a have a vote to continue this item. Who made a, who made a Only motion? three of us. Okay. Commissioner Christensen. <laughs> Aye. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. So this item's continued to our next meeting. And now we'll see if we can go back to item B on our agenda. And and can Chair we go Wilk back to, back. Can we go on to uh, item B? Looks <laughs> like this isn't a demonstration of how a meeting should run. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, you know. You know, I, I do think there's something to be said about having a process where the public can easily participate and hear and be involved. And this seems like tonight we're not quite yeah. there. Maybe we should continue this. So I think it it should be continued because this is one of the bigger projects we're going to do mm -hmm. this year in Capitola and I think an important one for a lot of people. Yes. Do we I need agree. a motion to continue? We do. Uh, I'll make a motion to continue this item uh, to our next regularly scheduled meeting. Second. I, I would just like to add, this is a big project. Yes. And I think it's important to have the applicants present, not on Zoom. I agree with Commissioner Ruth. Um, I think that uh, it is a big project for Capitola and uh, we're accustomed to having the applicants be here. At least, at least a representative. At least a representative <laughs> who can answer our questions and questions from the public. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion from Commissioner Westman and a second from Commissioner Ruth. Do we have a roll call vote to uh, move this to uh, continue this item till our next meeting? Sure. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Uh, he's recused. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Chair Wilk. I apologize, gentlemen. Uh, we just don't know how to handle this, and we'll hope to see you again soon. And with that, we'll move on to item number six, which is adjournment. If I had my gavel, I would adjourn this. This meeting is adjourned. Nice to see everyone. <laughs>